Are you constantly fighting tracks that are buried in the red? You gotta move the fader every time you do something because the volume of your project is just out of control. Or maybe you've got presets that you can't understand why it works sometimes and other times it sounds completely different. The problem is probably due to a mismanagement of gain staging. And we're gonna talk about it right now. What's up music makers, it's Luke from Sojourner Tracks. Gain staging is a fundamental of audio processing where you're managing the input and output level of every step of your track. So, you know, we're all used to just grabbing that volume fader at the end and pulling it down. But as we all know, if you start adding all of your tracks together, all of your effects, pretty soon it gets to be unmanageable and you're just constantly putting out fires, trying to keep things out of the red. There are input and output levels at every step, starting at the waveform and then moving on through every plugin. All of those need to be managed. And by learning to do that, it's not that complicated it's gonna save you a ton of time and a ton of headaches. This was one of those game-changing things for me. If you find today's content useful, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Let's dive into Logic and check it out. Like I said, proper gain staging needs to take place across every track in your whole session. So let's take a look at a single track and see how this might accumulate into the problem that we know that it becomes where everything is just out of control. If I just play this track, this bass track here without anything on it, the fader set to zero, let's check the level. So it's peaking at like negative nine. Uh, but if we start to add some effects on here, and I'm just gonna add some using just the, uh, the presets that are in here, I'm not gonna go through and actually do anything specific. So we'll add a EQ and a compressor. Let's do that. Now let's check the level again. So you can see just by adding those two plugins, we've went we went from negative nine to zero. And uh the reason it's not actually clipping is because the compressor is chopping some of that off. Um, and we are definitely clipping the stereo output. So this I'm sure you've run into time and time again, as you begin to add plugins, you're amassing more and more volume. So what, what can you do to manage this? Well, each of these plugins actually has a control within it that we need to be managing. But before we do that, let's go all the way into the waveform um, because sometimes your waveform can be a lot louder than it needs to be. Now, a good rule of thumb is with without any plugins on, with the fader set to zero, we wanna be shooting for about negative 18, peaking at like negative 12, somewhere in there. It doesn't have to be perfect, but that's a great place to start. So if we play this again with nothing on. So we're peaking at negative nine. And what we can do is if you go up here to the region editor, there's a gain tool here. And with my base track selected, if I drag this down like four, so negative four. Now let's, let's check the level. And the reason we pick a uh, negative 18 is because it's approximately uh, zero in uh, like analog equipment. So it's if you're using some analog emulation type of plugins, they're going to be calibrated to respond better to that. But it's also just it's a good rule of thumb just to have a target in mind. So um, now with that in mind, let's go to our EQ and see where we're at with our level. So we've gotten somewhat of a boost, um, maybe three, two to three dB there. What you can do, which 
if you're like me, you had no idea um, why this was here, there is a gain knob in the EQ. So if we're now, we want to, to keep things within that target range of negative 18 to negative 12. We want to maintain that throughout the whole track. So every plugin we add, we want to compensate for that so that we're, we maintain the same volume while adding the effects. So we can get the effect of the EQ, get the effect of the compressor without actually adding volume. Because that's where things get out of control, right? You do that across 100 tracks and you're done, you know, you're crushing the stereo output. So we can compensate those 3 dB by just bringing the gain of the EQ down. And now if we play it, let's see what happens. Now we're back to peaking at around negative 12. We could go a little bit further if we wanted to, but it, we're, we're shooting for the same basic range. And if we add the compressor back in, what's gonna happen? All the way back up to negative three. But again, we have input and output controls here. Now this is where I'm gonna say, again, there there is a, uh, the one reason that you may want to actually push more input into a plugin um, instead of compensating for negative 12 to negative 18 is especially like these compressors, for example, are emulations of analog gear. So it might sound cool to totally crank the input volume into this compressor, but then you're just going to need to make up for it with the output control to get it back down to negative 18. So let's run through that quickly. and I'll show you what I mean. If we were to just go um, with the current settings to get things down to negative 18, it would look something like this. But what if we wanted to really slam this compressor and see if we could get some more of that analog juice out of it? We can, we can boost the input level. That just means we'll have to take more out on the other side. the same thing if you were to add a lot of makeup gain. Um, so every time you're adding a net gain in in volume or gain in, at the input stage, you need to compensate for that at the output stage. And if you do this, you can imagine, so if you, if you take care of your gain uh, at the waveform, make sure that's something manageable. Then as it hits your first plugin, make sure that that plugin isn't adding more gain, that it's coming out the same that you started with. So if it's negative 12 to 18, maintain that negative 12 to 18 throughout the whole track, the whole channel strip. And you're gonna find that by the time you've done this to 20 tracks, you won't even have, even have to touch your stereo output volume because it will just, it will just fit in side the a manageable range and that's kind of the you know i i don't want to have to manage the volume at the stereo output or the master level because that to me that means i probably did something wrong along the way in the management of the gain staging so i think if you do this carefully at the beginning oh it saves you so many headaches of having to constantly fight and then it's it's that thing where you know you add a preset to a track to a vocal let's say um that you're used to sounding really awesome but on this track it sounds just sounds really bad um that could be because you just recorded a hotter vocal or you maybe it's it's not hot enough so you need to manage the gain if you manage the input going into that preset uh, it will sound more consistent and when you're putting out more consistent mixes, you're going to feel better. You're going to be more confident about what you're doing. 
I'm convinced that implementing correct gain staging into your workflow is gonna be a huge win for you. So have you done it yet? How's it working for you? Let me know in the comments below. As always, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video.